In this video, we'll take a look at critical analysis through the lens of ethnic and race studies, uh, specifically through the lens of what's called critical race theory. So let's get into what we're looking at here. Critical race theory examines artifacts using a framework that considers the effects of systemic racism in all modes of expression and how cultural perceptions of race are represented in the various artifacts. So again, they were looking at the both the ideas of systemic uh, racism and how that affects the way we express ourselves in various modes of medium and uh, and how the cultural perceptions of race are represented in the various forms and various artifacts that we present. So a little bit of history, uh, not a great deal of depth here, but, uh, but to, to go into, but just a little bit of history on uh, critical race theory. It was really developed in the mid seventies uh, by scholars and, and legal uh, minds and, and legal scholars who felt the progress was moving too slowly following the civil rights movement in the 1960s. So they felt like the progress that was made in the sixties had really gotten bogged down by the mid seventies and, and was not progressing um, very quickly or at all during that time time. So they uh, developed critical race theory as a way to kind of examine how they could um, move that forward more effectively. Uh, it combines really the elements of critical legal studies, um, which is a large part of where it came from was the, you know, looking at how race is reflected in the legal system in the United States. So it combines elements of the critical legal studies uh, with feminist theory, um, because there's a lot of crossover there in how those areas would be viewed. And, and uh, so anyway, the, the critical lens of, of critical race theory uh, comes from that combination of critical legal studies and feminist criticism um, that had been developed previously. Major premises of uh, critical race theory. There, there are five what they call the basic tenets of critical race theory uh, that were presented by, uh, you know, really uh, effectively by um, by uh, Solorzano and Yasso in their work in 2000. So uh, they became what what became to be known as the five basic tenets of critical race theory. The first is the centrality and intersectionality of racism. Uh, this basically says that racism exists everywhere in American life. It is pervasive in American life from our internal thoughts and our individual actions to the embedded systemic inclusion in our institutions, our systems, and in our culture. Uh, so that, uh, so again, this is something that is just ingrained in American culture and has been since really prior to the founding of the United States of America, um, this, this really distinct type of racism, uh, which is hard to sometimes uh, recognize or reconcile to, to see within ourselves, but, uh, but really is, is a, it's just a pervasive thing in, uh, in each of our individual thoughts, actions, and then all the way up through our institutions of government and, and in our culture as a whole. Uh, another major premise is the challenge of the dominant ideology. Critical race theory seeks to challenge the dominant ideology. It challenges things like, uh, like in the United States, like the belief that we have the ability to be truly neutral and objective and colorblind. Those things are myth, are myths. Neutrality and object, ob objectivity and colorblindness really are myths. They are impossible given the embedded nature of racism in American culture. The fact that it is, it is not just surface level. This is something that is ingrained um, within us in a sense that uh, makes those things really impossible. And part of the, part of the first, uh, you know, ability to, uh, for us to overcome these types of things is to recognize that those things are impossible at this point, um, that, they're, that they're not realities for us. Uh, so critical race theory seeks to challenge that dominant ideology that those things exist and help us recognize that they don't. Critical race theory also has a commitment to social justice, um, and they recognize in critical race theory, it recognizes that oppression is not just limited to race. So critical race theory then seeks to extend its efforts of social justice beyond just race. So it includes, um, social justice toward or social injustice toward, um, the different genders toward people of different nationalities and ethnicities, and just any, any group of people that would be oppressed. Critical race theory seeks to, uh, to kind of end, um, the injustice there and they have a commitment to social justice for all people. Critical race theory also underscores the importance of experiential knowledge. They underscore the importance of expressing lived experiences in understanding the realities of racism and other forms of oppression, that these are things that need to be expressed, um, both for the health of the people who experience them and the, their ability to, to kind of speak their truth, so to speak, as to what happened to them and, and the experiences that they've had 
and for others to recognize those experiences and see them as real, see them as things that do happen uh, here in our in our culture, in our country. And uh, so we want to, uh, they underscore the importance of uh, that experiential knowledge and expressing that and sharing that with the, the public at large. Finally, critical race theory, the fifth tenet here is that, uh, is the use of interdisciplinary, an interdisciplinary perspective. So critical race theory recognizes that the path to eliminating oppression will require knowledge and action from multiple disciplines, multiple areas of influences. So the framework pulls from many diverse and different fields, right? So it pulls from the legal field, it pulls from feminism, it pulls from philosophy, it pulls from religion, it pulls from governmental affairs, it pulls from all these areas. Uh, and, and it also pulls from different areas of life, not only the individual experiences, but government uh, agencies, government experiences, um, institutional experiences like education and, uh, and things like that are drawn in here. So it, it, the recognition is there that this is not just a, a single perspective that's going to draw from one area. It's going to require work and, and information and, and innovation from all of these different areas uh, coming together in order to provide um, the kind of social justice that critical race theory um, seeks. So some common questions that, that will come up uh, just in general as we explore critical race theory. One, what is the significance of race in contemporary American society? So what significance does that play in our society in general? Uh, where, in what ways and to what ends does race appear in dominant American culture and shape the ways that we interact with one another? What types of texts and other cultural artifacts reflect dominant culture's perceptions of race? How can scholars convey that racism is a concern that affects all members of society and not just those groups that are, that are feeling oppression, but all uh, members of society? How does racism continue to func function as a persistent force in American society? How can we combat racism to ensure that all members of American society experience equal representation and access to fundamental rights? And how can we accurately reflect the experiences of, of victims of racism? So again, acknowledging the importance of, of expressing ex that lived experience, how can we accurately reflect these experiences uh, of the people who've experienced that? Now, again, these are, these are more broad questions that, that come from critical race theory and that, that, uh, that we should seek to ask ourselves now, as we're looking at, at, uh, ethnics and, and race studies as a critical lens, there are some more application oriented questions that we can consider as we, as we seek to apply these concepts to a specific artifact or artifacts. Um, there's some critical application questions that we can ask a little, that are a little more practical, a little less broad for just societal consider, considerations and a little more, uh, specific application to, uh, artifacts here as we would look uh, in, in critical aspects. So, um, first, what are the power relationships between the people of different races or ethnicities? How is that power relationship uh, expressed in the artifact or the, or whatever it is that, that we're examining here? Is there a power relationship between people of different races or ethnicities? And if so, what is that? How are the racial and ethnic roles defined? So are there, is there some stereotyping going on? Is there some, you know, some, some cultural stereotypes about races and ethnicities happening in this artifact or are they, is everything being whitewashed in a sense, uh, to, to make it seem like race and ethnicity is not at all a consideration or a factor um, because there's, you know, really the truth is the middle ground there. They're somewhere in the middle. So how are these racial and, eth and ethnic roles being defined in this artifact? How do characters embody these traits? How are the different racial and uh, people of racial and ethnic, ethnic backgrounds uh, portrayed? You know, how are they embodied in this work, in this artifact? And how are they represented? Do characters take on traits uh, from people of other races or ethnicities? How so? And how does this change the other's reactions to them? In other words, are people of color uh, given attributes and, and characteristics that would be more common to, uh, to you know, white people and or vice versa? And uh, are they taking on traits of other people? And if so, how? And then how does that affect the way that they interact with the others? How do you think that affects the relationships that exist within that artifact? 
What does the work reveal about the operations, either economically, politically, socially, or psychologically, of systemic racism? Uh, so what does this tell us? You know, how does this fit into our, our, our knowledge of systemic racism? Does it recognize that? Does it, um, does it try and uh, cover over that? Does it uh, uh, try and minimize the, the, the thoughts or impact of systemic racism? Does it, does it really play into these things? And, and just thinking about um, all of those things, how, how does this, what does this reveal about systemic racism in our society? So again, these are things we need to think through, we need to process as we're viewing different artifacts. If we take on this lens, we need to have these questions in mind and be able to see from a different perspective how um, this artifact might be um, uh, interpreted, how it might have been created for such a purpose, and how it might be interpreted by others, and what it might do to either halt or expand the the uh, acknowledgement of, of racism in our society and and the the, uh, the significant attributes and differences between people of, of different ethnicities and races in our society so um, these are things we need to to think about and process as we view these things and then come to conclusions and be able to express and share these conclusions if you have any questions about critical race theory or any other sort of critical framework that we've examined in this in this video series, please don't hesitate to email me. I'd love to chat with you via email. Uh, in the meantime, go out there and again, use this as one more tool in your toolbox to examine different artifacts and, uh, and really have those different perspectives, use those different lenses to give you more and broader perspective of the way that uh, the way that different aspects and attributes of the world are represented in the media that we view.